Last month's Ontario budget signaled the government's preference for tax credits over subsidies for child care. Now, as more details emerge about the government's wider funding strategy for the sector, advocates and many municipalities across the province are speaking up. And that includes Carolyn Ferns, who's public policy and government relations coordinator with the Ontario Coalition for Better Child Care. Welcome back. Thank you for having you me, You were Steve. just here a month ago. That's right. But we decided to get you back in here because uh, the earth has moved somewhat Things in the last month. Things have changed, yeah. yes. Why don't you just bring right. us up to speed? What's different? Yeah, so when the budget came down on, on April 11th, um, you know, the message that we heard from the government was it's, it's business as usual, uh, child care funding hasn't changed. Uh, there's a new tax credit, but um, that's not going to change things for the licensed childcare budget. Um, but we didn't see any details at that point. So since then, um, the community and municipalities have sort of been waiting for some of those details. And a, a few of those details have emerged. We're sort of been playing detective to, to sort of get them from the government. Um, but it's become clear that, um, you know, that line on budget day um, was just simply not true. And um, municipalities are facing, at a minimum, $80 million in cuts to child care funding. So the line you're referring to on Budget Day is that it's status quo and nobody's going to mm -hmm. be cut. Mm -hmm. That's right. The, yeah. cuts, the cuts have been announced and the, uh, have been apparent. Yeah, that's right. I mean, our organization, um, when we got those allocation figures that showed uh, money that goes from the provincial government to uh, municipalities for child care, um, simply comparing the 2019 numbers to the 2018 numbers, we see an immediate $80 million cut to child care. Um, and then what the City of Toronto and has, has done and other municipalities are doing right now, they're crunching the numbers, is to also take into account the other policy changes that are being imposed on municipalities, um, changes to cost sharing, that sort of thing. Um, and the City of Toronto has shown that that uh, makes the cut even deeper. Um, they're estimating there could be 6,000 subsidies lost in the City of Toronto alone. And like I say, other municipalities are still crunching the numbers on that. We're actually waiting for even a few more details from the government. Um, and uh, you know, we're worried that as other municipalities uh, figure out what the impacts are going to be, um, we're going to see some real cuts to services that affect families Let's and just look at that 80 million province-wide number. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where do you get that number from? So we get it from the, the government, you know, from the Ministry of Education's allocations um, to childcare. Um, so it's the government's figure. Um, that's why we didn't have it when the, um, when the budget came down. We waited for them to release their allocations. We compared them to the year before, and there's $80 million gone. And what does an $80 million cut mean in your world? Um, it, it means a lot. So, um, you know, here in Toronto, they've already started crunching the numbers on subsidies being lost. Um, and they're saying it could be over 6,000 subsidies. Um, the government disputes that number. But even if it was half that many subsidies lost, what happens is municipalities have to freeze subsidies. And what that means is that families that qualify for, for subsidy, low-income families who would qualify for financial assistance to pay for childcare, um, they simply cannot get a subsidy. Subsidies have been frozen. So a low-income family, maybe a single mom who needs to go back to work, um, you know, needs that childcare subsidy to be able to do that, won't be able to get a childcare subsidy. That's what it means at the end of the day. And what does it mean for her life? Well, what it means for her life, and we have uh, parents who call our office all the time to tell us the situations that they're facing. Um, it means that they can't go back to work, they can't take that job. Um, maybe they're wanting to go back to school. We had a mom at our press conference on Friday talking about how she'd been accepted into a PhD program, and she couldn't go because there was no childcare space. The message from the government that, you know, people are exaggerating, um, it, it's becoming harder and harder to believe that. Um, because, you know, it's not only the city of Toronto, um, it's not only the opposition at, at this point, it's, uh, you know, the big city mayors, the, the rural mayors talking about public health. And in the case of childcare, it's uh, parents and it's childcare providers who, who do this every day, who know exactly what this money means to their programs and, and whether or not they can keep the doors open. So I think that the ministry um, and, and the Ford government should, should listen to people that are trying to, um, to get their attention and say, hey, there's something wrong here. Um, and you know, what I worry is that you know, now they're going to talk about consultation, but you don't consult after the fact. Um, you, know, you should be consulting up front with the community, listening to the community, and then making your decisions. Well, the minister's office may, have, may not have responded to us, but uh, Lisa Thompson, the Minister of Education, did mm -hmm. respond in the legislature to questions mm -hmm. about this. 
So we'll play a clip of that, and then you can mm -hmm. tell me what you think of the answer, okay? Sure. Sheldon, if you would. We have to get all the facts out on the table. You know, we know for a fact that the city-run daycare centres are 30% higher in cost than any other centres across across this province. And you know, even the city's own auditor general, even the city's own auditor general, has raised warning flags about the manner in which the city of Toronto has managed and administered their daycare centres. For instance, they have city administrators go around and monitor things like how much greenery is on trees. They also have city administrators go around to make sure the seasonal decorations are in place in daycares. Honestly, Speaker, oh is that the best use of taxpayer dollars? Response. I think the City the of Toronto can find 5% in administration efficiencies because we need to get it right for the families. Okay, a bunch of things to unpack there. Uh, let's start with this. 30% higher cost mm -hmm. uh, in the kind of situation she described mm -hmm. uh, versus other, other places in the province. So what the minister is referring to is um, child care programs that are run by the City of Toronto. Um, and the difference in cost of, uh, of those programs is, is labor costs. It's paying early child educators decently. And that's actually one of the, the wonderful things about City of Toronto programs. It's one of the reasons that, frankly, parents flock to try to get a space in a City of Toronto child care centre is because they have low, turno low, low turnover of staff, highly qualified staff and early child educators that make the programs a wonderful experience for young children. Are they unionized? They're actually, the they are. They're unionized. Um, and they are programs that other, you know, other communities look to um, as an example of, of what childcare should be. And um, you know, our members are uh, often not, are mostly nonprofit childcare programs, um, and they're actually very supportive of public childcare and the City of Toronto's childcare centers because they know that they're almost an exemplar for what we should want for all childcare. I have not independently confirmed what the minister said mm -hmm. in the House there about inspectors going around and making sure that seasonal displays were mm -hmm. up to hoil and uh, up to speed or whatever the expression is. Uh, but if that is in fact the case, would you agree with her that that's um, an unnecessary expenditure? I think that she's exaggerating some of those, uh, those uh, examples there. Um, what she's talking about, I think, is, uh, you know, City of Toronto quality assurance, which goes into centres and makes sure, you know, that they're doing a good job and that they're offering quality programs to children. Now, Minister Thompson is the Minister of Education. She should know that we have um, a curriculum framework here in Ontario for early learning and childcare called How Does Learning Happen? What those inspectors are doing are making sure that her curriculum document is being carried out in programs that those children are having high quality early learning experiences. I think as the Minister of Education, she should be very interested in that. One of the things she went on to say was that in a budget where the province transfers a billion dollars uh, for childcare funding transfers to cities, how big a difference is 80 million bucks on a budget of a billion dollars? Mm, What's the mm -hmm, response to that? Mm -hmm. Um, well, what I, what I wish the minister would understand on this file is that um, you know, $80 million actually makes a big difference. Um, Childcare programs are often run, uh, they're running a very tight ship. And um, as I was talking about before, about fee subsidies, um, the worry is that as soon as budgets get cut, fee subsidies get frozen. Now, the effect of that is that um, nude families, even if they qualify, can't get a fee subsidy. That means they can't afford a childcare space. That means that center often has a vacancy because nobody can afford a childcare space. So we get into this unfortunate, ridiculous situation where we have wait lists for childcare because families want childcare spaces, but nobody can afford them. Hmm. Right? Um, so that's the effect of having a subsidy freeze, and that puts programs at risk of closure. So I wish the minister understood this file better to see that this is a fine balance in keeping childcare programs operating um, and that she took that responsibility a bit more seriously. I, I hear you, but of course the, the, the government first and foremost has pledged to balance the budget mm -hmm. within five years. And I guess in their view, they see every single thing that government does is going to have to tighten its belt. Mm -hmm. uh, healthcare is going to have to tighten the belt. Education is going to have to tighten the belt. The justice system is going to have to tighten the belt, and so are childcare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that a reasonable argument? 
Um, you know, that's definitely the government's argument. Mm -hmm. um, but I would point to their, their new care tax credit, where they're spending at least $390 million um, and, and, and possibly um, millions more um, estimates from economists. You know, if that number continues to balloon, it's going to create additional pressure on the education budget, on the child care budget, um, and giving parents a bit of money in their pocket when there's no childcare spaces to spend it in isn't going to be very helpful. So I think it's about smart investment in childcare and, and really looking at the system as a whole. Let's, uh, Carolyn, finish up on this. Uh, I haven't heard anybody from the government articulate this, although I think it's probably safe to say some people feel this way, which is they're not crazy about the idea of cities being in the quote-unquote business of operating childcare. Mm -hmm. that this is something that the private sector, in their view, ought to be able to take care of. And if people want child care, mm -hmm. go purchase it as a good as you would anything else. Mm -hmm. How about that argument? Um, I, I think that that does articulate uh, the government's feelings on, on the matter. Um, just to explain the, the sort of child care sector as a whole, um, city-run or municipally operated, regionally operated child care programs are a very small um, piece of, of child care spaces, um, but they're an important one because, as I said, they, they provide examples of really high quality program. They're often used um, for, as research hubs to, to, to discover new things about creating great quality programs. The vast majority of child care in the province right now, more than 75%, is nonprofit. So it's, it's private, nonprofit um, child care programs. Now, where the government is now making a change is in opening up more government funding and more expansion to for-profit child care. And I think that's very concerning because um, research has shown that there's a quality difference between nonprofit and for-profit child care. We had this fight last time you were on the show. And also, um, I mean, but also it's, it's public education money. And I think that um, Ontarians actually uh, would be a bit uh, worried to hear that the Ministry of Education is spending public education dollars on bringing uh, big box for-profit child care into our schools. That's our time. We thank Carolyn Ferns from the Ontario Coalition for Better Child Care for coming back to our studio to update us on what's been going on. And my suspicion is this isn't the last we'll see of you. No, definitely not. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.